Hi, my name is Michaela King. I'm a third year PhD student here at Bird Polar Research Center. Um, I am working in Ian Howitt's research group, the Glacier Dynamics Research Group, and I am studying how the glaciers in Greenland are changing. So in Greenland, what we're doing is that we are trying to have a better grasp on how the snow is accumulating and compacting on the ice sheet. So this will help us have better estimates of how much snow mass is accumulating on the ice sheet and how the total mass of the ice sheet is changing through time. So what we're doing is we have a few sites on the ice sheet that we're installing a various suite of sensors that can tell us how much snow is falling and how that snow compacts through, into ice through time. This is my second field season, so I went in 2018 with Santiago and Sal, our two um, the two others that joined me in the field, so the three of us were a team, and then the same team came back this year in 2019. This field season was particularly interesting because we had a very early start to the melt season. So usually we define the melt season in Greenland as the time where we have at least three days where 5% of the ice sheet has started to melt. So that means the surface, the snow surface, has actually started to melt. And we usually go at the end of April, early May, and that is early enough in the season that we don't see a lot of surface melt. We go there not expecting to see those bright blue melt ponds that you often see in photos from National Geographic, etc. But actually this year we did. Because the melt season started so early, we actually had waterfalls coming off the edge of the ice sheet. And as we got into our plane to move inland to our, our field sites, we could look down and we actually saw small rivers of the blue water forming as well as bright blue melt ponds. So this, this uh, melt season was really interesting. One reason that the melt season started so early this year has to do with um, the weather patterns that were in place. So there was a really strong persistent high pressure system over Greenland so that allowed two things to happen. Um, it allowed a lot of warmer, moist air from south, think of like the Gulf Stream around Florida, to kind of come up to about the southern tip of Greenland, so it brought a lot of warmer weather. But also, because of this high pressure system, we didn't have very many clouds over Greenland, so the skies were unusually clear. That allowed a lot of that solar radiation to hit the surface and, and warm the snow.